Welcome to the Cincinnati Art Museum's CAM book. Each Tuesday and Thursday, a staff member or volunteer will share an object from the permanent collection and post questions for discussion. Check back every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. for new work and a new conversation. Hi, I'm Helen, a docent at the Art Museum. Today, we'll learn about the newly conserved Jane Shrine from Ainsley Cameron, the curator of South Asian art, Islamic art in antiquity, and Kelly Rechtenwald, our objects conservator. The Jane Shrine was a household shrine that's perhaps 200 to 300 years old. Ainsley, why did you choose this shrine for this gallery? Sure, thank you, Helen. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I chose this shrine to place in our gallery as a real anchor point to talk about some of the themes that we have on display here. Part of what I want to communicate to people in the South Asian Art Gallery is that there are multiple ways to show devotion to one's God. And one of those ways is through domestic devotional practice. So on view in the gallery, we have objects that reference temple devotional practices, believers going to temples in order to practice their religion, to demonstrate their devotion. And we also have objects that talk about processional practice. So these are pilgrimages and also processions that would go through streets to bring people together um, around the idea of religious devotion. And then the third way of honoring one's God is through domestic practice. And this shrine would have originally been in a household, in a person's home, and they would have used it for daily veneration of their God. Ainsley, please tell us about Jainism and how the shrine would have been used. Absolutely. So Jainism is a philosophical religious tradition, one that centers nonviolence and meditation. Followers of Jainism revere jinnas or victors, and these are individuals, um, saints if you will, who have overcome connection to earthly processes that include um, birth, death, and rebirth. Ainsley, guests love to hear fun facts. So can you give us one fun fact that the guests would like to hear? Sure, um, I mean, this, this object is a treasure trove of imagery, of mythical creatures, of elephants, of birds, of celestial beings. So I really recommend spending some time with the object and really understanding the, um, the visual program that we see here. Uh, one fact I do want to uh, draw people's attention to is right in the center here, we have this vinyl outline and what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that our visitors understood how a Jane Shrine like this would have been used within daily practice. So there would have been um, a small altarpiece of a Jinnah that would have been included in a piece like this. And so what we've done is we've shown you a really lovely outline of it so that you get a sense of what the Jinnah would have looked like and what that altarpiece would have looked like. And that's a drawing that was done by one of our curatorial fellows in house. So curators wear a lot of hats, including um, working on object and archeological drawings. <laughs> Kelly, how long did it take you to clean and restore and conserve this beautiful shrine? We, well, in, it's been in my mind space for about three years, but I worked on it for two years actively, about seven hours um, a day. <laughs> Kelly, um, what was the most challenging part of this process? The most challenging part was figuring out how to remove the coating safely without disrupting the paint layers beneath. The paint was, it's a little unstable, it's a matte paint, so more susceptible to solvents and removal. So we had to be very careful to devise something that would remove the very tough and thick coating without disrupting that paint layer. But what was the coating? I mean, had they used varnish? The, it was an organic coating and a varnish that was put over it, likely to consolidate the paint and keep that stable. Mm -hmm. um, and originally it would have been clear, but this coating had darkened over time, had absorbed a lot of dust and grime, and had really become almost blackened over the entire surface. As a docent, when I used to tour the shrine, pre-glory, shall we say, it was so evident that it was dark, 
it sometimes is hard for kids to see what you wanted them to see. Right. But what was interesting, they always saw the angels. Uh, yeah. I am not sure why, but they always saw the angels, even with all the dust that accumulated over the years. Yeah, and now you can see their garments. So they have really intricate and detailed uh, floral garments on them that are really beautiful, lots of gilding on them, and that's all uncovered now that you can see. And blue wings. And yes. That blue was wings. a surprise yeah. to me. I don't know why I thought they were just brown or something. Yeah, but well that's what they looked like before. They <laughs> did. Now that the shrine is clean, what is it that you like most about it? The color, the vibrancy of it. I love that when you come in here, you'll try to take a picture of it with your phone and it throws off the color filter on your camera because really? it is, it's just wild. Yeah, there's so much color now. It just, in the contrast with the green of the wall, it throws off your color filter. So it's almost impossible to take a true photo of it. You have to come see it in person. That's a good way to end. Thank you for joining us on Camelot today, and please come and visit to see the true colors.